Well, hello there, YouTube. Uh, Inch95 here, bringing you guys a deck profile. Uh, this is something I was going to do a little bit later in the month since it is October, and uh, as you guys can probably tell, uh, I'm doing a dueling network deck profile. Uh, I didn't really feel like getting all the stuff together. I just I was just too lazy. Like I have all the stuff for it. It's just I guess people wanted like a more user friendly layout, so I figured I'd do it on dueling network. It's a zombie deck profile, as you guys know. The theme of October is always Halloween, so I figured I would do something. Uh, Something a little bit more different, something a little bit more fun that I've been playing around with. Uh, mostly on Dueling Network. Um, I haven't really played this in real life yet, although I haven't been playing too much uh, regardless. But anywho, I figured I'd hop straight into the deck. It is uh, a zombie deck profile, and uh, you guys can probably tell by the skeleton. The, the side deck's kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say the side deck's irrelevant, but it's not fully tested. Like It's just the side deck that I've been working with and had the most success with thus far. Um, but anywho, as far as the deck, as you guys can tell, we run uh, 18 monsters, 7 spells, and 15 traps. Um, for the monsters, and, and I just sorted, like, I usually sort uh, the monsters by, like, groupings, like, how I want to talk about it. But unfortunately, uh, I did the A through Z thing, so it kind of just orders it kind of weird for me. But uh, I run uh, Caius, Dark Armed, uh, Glow Up Bulb, uh, 3 Goblin Zombies, Double Gores, Double Mathematician, uh, Triple Mizuki, Triple Plague Spreader. Uh, one Sphere Reaper, that's probably the one card in the deck I would probably uh, change. Like, that's like my 40th card, believe it or not, so I'll probably go back to him a little bit. Uh, Zombie Master, and then for the spells, we run Allure of Darkness, Burial from a Different Dimension, Foolish Burial, Soul Charge, Triple Upstart Goblin, since it's a combo deck, obviously. Um, double Breakthrough Skill, Compulsory Evacuation Device, Double Karma Cut, Triple Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, Solemn Warning, Triple Trap Stun, Triple Vanity's Emptiness, and then for the uh, extra deck, we have one Beals the, of the Diabolic Dragons, one Crimson Blader, one Goyal Guardian, one HTS Siamuth, one Revive King Hades, Scrap Dragon, uh, Stardust Spark Dragon, Thought Ruler Archfiend. Uh, for the Exceeds, we have Abyss Dweller, Castell, Exiton, Lavalval Chain, Silent on Arc, uh, a Giant Hand, uh, and a Master Key Beetle. And then for the side deck, uh, the side deck, I, I don't, I'm not really going to go too much in detail, but uh, as far as explaining it after this, but I run Wen Majesty's Fiend, Double Maxi. One Vanity's Fiend, Triple MST, one Regeki, uh, a third Karma Cut, three Light Imprisoning Mirrors, and three Wiretaps. Uh, you could probably cut one of the Light Imprisonings, I just, I've been toying around with it. Uh, there's not, like, I can't really side Shadow Mirrors in this deck, and I already main Emptiness. Um, so I just needed something else, and Satellers and Artifacts is kind of annoying with this deck, so I figured I would just maximize uh, Light Imprisonings. Um, but I'm just going to hop all over the place with this deck. As you can kind of tell by the skeleton, uh, this is kind of the explanation. So if you guys were just here for a profile, you guys can basically exit out of this video. Um, but if you guys want to stick around for a quick uh, explanation of some of the choices, feel free to. Um, as far as the skeleton goes, you guys might see similarities between this deck and just Burning Abyss decks in general. Um, mostly uh, dealing with the trap lineup as far as the breakthrough skills, um, the standard trap lineup. Three trap stones, three emptiness, three wing blasts. And double karma cut. I side the third one. I was initially running three, but I, I forgot the glow bubbles back, so I had to add that in. Um, but the trap lineup, it's essentially like I, I wanted to give, like obviously I wanted to make a different deck other than the top three. And at the same time, I felt like what would be the best approach to do this. And I noticed burning abyss and this deck operate almost like the same as far as like floaters. But the difference between this deck and burning abyss, especially when I tested this deck against burning abyss, was that this deck, like when it resolves traps, then it can like genuinely like OTK you. And then it just uses like all the other traps to be like supplemental to essentially just break up opponent's plays um, and hinder their plays while you're basically amassing resources to put like a fast push or two on board and then you just kill them. Um, and while you do that, you obviously just sit on your traps. And for the most part, pretty much all the stuff you'll be discarding for Karma Cuts and Wing Blast is kind of just like uh, Burning Abyss where it doesn't really matter if it's engraved. Uh, you're going to be discarding uh, Glow Bulb, you're going to discard Mizukis, Plague Spreaders, which is the only reason why I run three Plague Spreaders. I would not be running three Plague Spreaders if I didn't run Karma Cuts and Wind Blasts. Uh, I might put the third Karma Cut in again, or I might just add in like a Regeki Break or something, I'm not too sure. Um, depending, like, they, they haven't been like, too dead, it's just like, the, the only issue with this deck is like, obviously, I mean, obviously it's not a, a tier one deck right now, but the only issue, like, the core issue pretty much lies in drawing too many normal summons. Um, that being like, if you draw like hands like Double Plague Spreader, um, like a Trap Stun, um, like just like weird hands like you you'll, you'll be able to slowly grind out of those with like because of your discard traps but like that's why you need them to essentially get those dead cards out of your hand until you draw like a normal summonable monster whether it be mathematician uh, goblin zombie or mizuki and then you can kind of just capitalize and start doing all your plays there um, and obviously these are all just floaters they all interact with one another you guys all know the you know the different mizuki goblin zombie uh, place writer plays 
Uh, Spirit Reaper is the one weird zombie. I guess I'll just go back to him after I discuss Zombie Master. Zombie Master, uh, this card is like really bipolar, and the reason I say that is it's not the. It, it can be. It's either very very good when you when it when it works, but it. it but when it's not, it's pretty much going to lose you the game. And the reason I say that is, unlike cards like Lumina, Lights Run, Monk, uh, you have to discard a monster, which really, like, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but it just makes Lumina that much more versatile compared to Zombie Master. And on top of that, pretty much everyone's main decking three vanities, emptiness. Um, people are even running breakthrough skills still, and I mean, it's just very, very huge when your Zombie Master doesn't resolve. Um, I might try adding in a second one over the Spear Reaper. I just wanted to try the Reaper over for some versatility. Um, and I guess with Reaper, I guess you can maybe potentially talk about going into some uh, rank 9 plays, or not rank, level 9 plays, or uh, rank 3s. Um, I haven't included uh, a level 9, the only real level 9 would be Mistworm, so, and it's kind of gimmicky, so I probably wouldn't run that. And the only rank 3 I'd probably use is more than likely either Levier or Alucard, probably Levier, um, just because he's just, he's just huge when he resolves. Um, other things, Glow Ball being back, it doesn't have too much synergy with the deck as far as, you know, like the darks and everything, but it's kind of like Mizuki in this deck, it, being Earth doesn't really matter, you can send it to the grave uh, really, really easily if you draw it uh, with Karma Cuts, Wing Blasts, um, you can even send it to the grave with Foolish, which is huge. Um, actually, I totally lied, Giant Hand is not supposed to be in here, I just realized because I didn't Glow Bulb, there's supposed to be a Black Earth Dragon, I am so sorry for that. Um, you, can make, you can make Black Earth, which is really, really easy. Um, with a, with a level six, whether it be Caius or uh, or Goya or HD Asimuth or or Revive King even, um, which makes it you know it, it's huge. Being able to make Black Rose is obviously huge, and then you can just make another level eight. It's just, it's an instant level eight essentially with this deck or level seven. Um, but there's not too many like other scenarios. Like I never really want to make like Armides or uh, or Catastrophe with this deck, um, which is why I didn't really really run a rank five, and like everything else just seemed like so much better. Uh, as far as like the traps, uh, going back to them, uh, trap zone is just so huge. Like it's just like, it, like the difference between like let's say when you're playing is burning abyss. Like in burning abyss matchup, uh, utilizing your traps correctly is extremely important. Um, whereas with this deck, like if I resolve a trap stun against like burning abyss or almost any other deck that like has real traps or real answers, um, I can pretty much blow them out and then just set up an emptiness lock with like a board of like Beals, um, start a spark emptiness, um, just like really broken boards. Um, and um, just in general, like there's so many different options you can do with this deck, and, and everything's a floater. I mean, Goblin Zombie is one of the best floaters in the game. Or, no, it's not so much a, a good floater as it is as it was back in the day. But now it's uh, it's still pretty formidable. The discarding thing kind of sucks, where you deal direct damage because there's not too many decks you really want to help them mill. Um, it used to be more relevant before. Um, so there's actually a lot of times where I don't want to attack with him, which is unfortunate. But it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, Mathematician's great. He just puts uh, pressure on board. He lets you send a lot of your stuff to grave. Uh, like your normal summons, you pretty much just want to use them to establish one monster on board, and then if you can protect it for one turn with like Karma Cut or Wing Blast uh, or Warning or Compulse or even Breakthrough, maybe um, the following turn you can pretty much start doing like a really big push uh, with your Plague Spreaders, uh, Mizukis, maybe like another summon, and it's just huge. And obviously, you have your power cards such as Burial. Uh, soul charge that just come and just super clutch with this deck because there's so many different plays that you could do, um, and that's one of the biggest things. I've always loved zombies because it's, it's traditionally just been a really good combo deck. Um, not necessarily in the format or in the meta right now, but I think it's a deck that uh, offers a lot of plays. I like the fact that you can kind of toy around with it. There's not like it's definitely not linear, um, which is one thing I love. I hate I hate really linear decks, um, and you guys probably already know that if you've seen my other videos. Um, but the, like and, and the inclusion of defense like defense is just huge and like you guys might question like double gores but it's just huge because like you're not you're not always going to be setting like two three backers even if you draw like multiple backers like you're typically going to be conserving your trap stuns a lot um and your and your emptiness a lot of the time you're not just going to be blatantly just throwing it out there um so gore is just huge for defense he's at two and he offers plays um with glow ball obviously um you can control your grave still pretty fairly easily with this deck so dark arm is great uh, Caius, uh, in the main is just, uh, I didn't want to, like, I was actually thinking about running Ryza, but, like, Caius is just, like, infinitely better. Um, I know if, uh, if Super Poly was still at three, I would definitely, like, not be running Caius. I'd probably be running Ryza, um, or just Majesty Fiend or Vanity's Fiend main deck, which is what I initially had. Um, but Caius is just, like, instant spot remover, and you don't have to deal with anything anymore. So the only, like, real threat to this deck, uh, is Super Poly, and that's at one against your dolls. Uh, you should tell him night matchup is kind of back and forth, but you can usually grind out of that with your trap stuns and uh, heavy back rows. 
Um, if they're main decking wiretaps, it's kind of a problem, um, which is why I also side wiretaps, and obviously I'm siding MSTs um, and the light imprisonings. Uh, but shadows and uh, shadows can be an issue only when when you can't get a window off the board, which you should be able to deal with a window. Um, and I mean, you have what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Essentially, you essentially have eight outs to to window, which is which is huge. I mean, and obviously. Um, you, you can warn infusion, assuming they don't have another one. But eight out is just, eight outs is just really, really huge. And then obviously, when you side, you have another karma cut. Um, for the extra deck, Beals is just absolutely the nuts right now. Like, there's not really too many monsters that, cards that can just flat out deal with them. Um, it, it sucks against Burning Abyss, but against Burning Abyss, you have uh, you have Thought Roller, which is definitely one of the most busted uh, level eights right now for synchros, and absolutely love it. And it's huge in time. Um, you don't, believe it or not, you don't use the extra deck as much uh, as I thought you would. In my experience, there's very few times I actually really wanted to. Um, I just, that's why I included just like the most important ones. Uh, cards that either just shut out game mechanics or can be blowouts. Um, or can just softlock your opponent like Dweller and uh, Master Key Beetle with, uh, with Vanity's Emptiness. So there, there's some cool tricks in there. I definitely left some stuff you guys can kind of figure out. Um, the side, the only cards in the side that I think are kind of like semi-questionable are probably the Maxis. Um, there's not like there's not too much water floating around, <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, I guess it's good against that. It's it's only really good against Burning Abyss. Aside from that, it's not even that great against Burning Abyss. Like if they have real backers to deal with your stuff, they don't really care if they leave their monsters on board because they're floaters, unless you can just like flat out kill them next turn. Um, so Maxi's all right. I might try adding in like another Majesty Fiend, which Majesty Fiend and Vanity Fiend has just been huge. And they're out, I'm only using one because like. They, you need something else uh, coupled with them to essentially have them be real, like a real threat on board, like another, like a level six uh, or or a level eight synchro, um, or just like another big monster, whether it be a Gorge that you've used, um, whether it be a Caius, or just some big like monster with like real protection, and that, that's when they become a huge threat because not many decks can just flat out deal with them as easy as you can, and and a lot of the times their only real answers will be stuff that like, it's traps which you obviously have trap stuns when post side you have wire taps and you just have a, a ton of different outs i think there's a lot of plays um that you could deal um but yeah the, the only other thing like that i can really comment about this deck is i think it's it's definitely skill intensive it's not just like it's not linear um and it's something that you can toy around with which i really really love um i might try adding in the second zombie master again there's been a lot of good times like i said it's such a double-edged sword um, which is just why I wanted to cut one. There's just situations where, like, I would draw, like, Zombie Master, um, like, two traps, and, like, a Gores, and, like, a Mathematician or something. It's just, just, like, they're not a Mathematician, but just, like, really awkward hands that, like, you had to grind through more than anything, and the Zombie Master would just, like, kill your hand when you would want it to be either A, any other card, or when you would need it to resolve and you don't have a trap stun, um, or something to deal with their back rows, or, you know, whatever. Um, so that's why I'm trying Spirit Reaper. I might cut this out, or I might cut some other card out for, uh, Zombie Master, but he, he's all right. Like he's not the best card. He kind of just like sucks against Burning Abyss, and he's kind of just subpar against Shadows. He's not the best card against that deck. Um, he's just kind of a wall. I might, I might just cut him all together to be honest. Uh, I think the only other like real play that I saw with him was like there was like one or two scenarios where I had like a Mathematician and uh, a Zombie Master play again or a Soul Charge play with like Plague Spreader, and I would just like use two level threes and like the Plague Spreader to make whatever uh, you know make whatever level eight I wanted. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think of the deck. Um, I know it's pretty early for Halloween, but I figured I'd, you know, showcase something different. And I apologize for, for being on Dueling Network. I don't know how many guys really care. Um, I know people do countless Dueling Network videos, but um, this is a little bit more different. It's like a genuine deck profile. I just, I, didn't really, I haven't really been testing excessively, just playing around with this deck kind of just casually for the most part. But I figured it's something uh, you guys might, yeah, you guys might try out, even if it's just for fun or at locals or whatever. I'm not necessarily saying that this deck, uh, can, you know, could bring you a YCS top or something, but you never know. You might get lucky one of these days. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think of it. Check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook fan page, uh, Skype, Xbox Live, Gamertag, uh, all of my contact information down in the description of this video as well as at the end. You guys can feel free to add me, contact me, drop a, drop a like on this video, or drop a comment on what you guys would like me to film next or t discuss next. I'm trying to, you know, diversify my channel a little bit, kind of stepping out of my comfort zone, do a lot of more, a lot more different things. I'll try to have a couple dual videos up. Um, I haven't really been playing on my dual network account just because I haven't really been wanting to like be bothered by anyone, but I might hop back on it if, I guess if anyone really wants to message me and we could play on there, I'm definitely down to. 
I've um, just been really busy with school. So, you know, hopefully things turn around. I'm, you know, I'm working on my transfer and everything. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. That has been Deck of the Month for October 2014. And I hope you guys have a happy Halloween when it rolls around at the end of, end of this month. And, uh, yeah, enjoy, guys. And uh, check out my other videos. Subscribe if you already haven't. Peace out.